Hey, welcome back everyone. So today I want to I want to get the ball rolling again on these videos. So I'm going to get right to it. Today I'm not going to talk about um, additional me web driver methods. We'll cover that as we go along. But before proceeding, I want to include Mocha in our tests. And uh, basically, I want to just start thinking about the structure of our test suite. And slowly, we're going to structure it in a way that's more conducive to structured code, drier code. And um, that starts with some of the tooling. So this is Mocha right here. Mocha is a feature-rich JavaScript test framework running on Node. So it's often used, Mocha is often used in unit tests, but we can totally use it in these UI tests that we're writing with for Selenium. But basically, um, this is the style in which tests are written. You describe a test suite, and then you say that it should do this or it should do that. Um, and then you write your code in those in, in the callbacks there. So let me see if there are more examples. I mean, not really, but it doesn't matter. So um, yeah, it should have should say without error. And then you write your code, etc. When you're done, you can then run your test using Mocha from the command line, and then. Mocha will show you if once you have a whole test suite, it'll, it'll show you which tests are failing, which tests are passing, uh, how long each test take, etc. And then using Mocha, we could use some pretty cool reporters also to get some nice visual feedback on our tests. So let's start. Um, I'm going to install Mocha via npm. Uh, sudo npm install Mocha. Don't look at my password, guys, while I'm typing. All right. So it, it installs pretty quickly, very easily. Um, now that it's installed, what we're going to do is we're going to use right here, we're going to use the web driver testing um methods okay so here the selenium web driver testing these pro these are the wrappers that they use that that are basically written to be used with mocha and um we're gonna call that here because we're gonna that syntax i showed you we're gonna use it we're gonna use uh web drivers methods so what I'm going to do is a little bit of destructuring here. Uh, we'll do describe it after before. And we'll say it's Selenium web driver testing. OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start writing the test, the outline of the test suite. So we're going to say describe, and then we'll say uh, Mocha, or actually, since we're testing a library app, library app scenarios. And then in the callback, you include your test code. So what we're going to do is before each test, before each, that's one of the methods, we're going to run some code. And then after each, we're going to run some more code. And then but so these will happen before each each test that we write and after each test, right? But now we got to write the tests. And the way I, you can, there's a lot of, there's, you'll see different syntax, like variations on this, but I just like to say it. And then uh, works with Mocha. And then the callback. 
and this is this is the the where you start writing all this code here okay so I'm gonna copy wow <laughs> I think my computer is is overheating with all the recording and yeah check that out I did not mean to copy and paste it like that so I think I'm gonna I think in my next video I'm gonna switch back to Windows and Visual Studio Code I'm just so much more familiar with it and obviously it'll run smoother than a virtual machine so okay um, I think we'll have it just like this. We'll just have three different tests. And um, the way I'm going to want it is I'm going to want one that passes, one that fails, and another one that passes just to show you what you see in a terminal when you uh, run this code. Now, before each, what am I going to want? Before each, I'm going to want to start a new browser. And after each, I'm going to want to close that browser. So I'm going to cut this and paste it here. And um, so basically, there'll be a fresh driver instance at, um, for each test. And I'm going to call driver quit here and kill that instance at the end of each test, because I want a fresh browser for each test. Uh, to test everything individually and um, <clears throat> because of that you're, you're gonna have to start a new web driver instance for each test because that driver quit command that you call like if I just call this up top here um, for the first test it'll run that it'll run the browser on that instance and then it'll quit here but then when I try the next the next test I'm gonna get a, a, a no such session um, error or like uh, the driver instance or something like that you get an error that'll tell you that the you, the driver instance you're referring to is invalid it's it's already dead so blah 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 so that's why it's before each and so for so each test will have its own instance that begins and ends on its own so now um, So what what are we testing here? Okay. I'm gonna cut this and paste it here. And what ha what's happening here, right, is that we're checking that when we put a valid email, the opacity of that button of this button that it changes to one because right now it's at point three or point five or something. So us at fakemail.com. What is this? Okay. And um, so now, and then it waits for the opacity. We'll say, just wait five seconds and just in case. I don't want to wait forever. So that'll be one test, and, and then you describe the test here. So here it will be, you know, it changes button opacity uh, upon, upon um, email being filled out. That's a terrible, it's terrible, terrible way of <laughs> describing your test, but that'll do for now. And then this one here, this test was, this was you, all right, it's for the alert success. So the same thing is going to happen here. We'll, we'll still do this part. We can copy and paste that here. <clears throat> so we store the button in a variable. We we write the email and then we click and then we wait for the alert success, right? The alert that comes up 
and down here and it tells you success your invite has been sent so I want this one to fail so that we see what that looks like all right us com and then and then for this third one it'll be say driver find by CSS and we'll tell it to find the nav bar okay and then we'll get the text and we'll log it so that we see the the various nav bar links in the console So now, from the command line, because we have Mocha installed, we can just run, oh, and I skipped this part, uh, but basically, I renamed this file. It was just library.js before, and it was just sitting in the root directory. I created a test directory, and then I renamed this file library.test.js, because when you're using Mocha, um, eventually you'll have many more files and when you're writing a test and you can you're gonna include them at least the steps you're gonna include them in this subdirectory that's just a convention where after that you can say mocha test and it will search for a test directory and run all the files in there so when you have a lot of these files it's just very convenient so right now mocha test I bet you I'm gonna get some errors Oh, the timeout, right. And driver's not defined. That is, okay. So the timeout, it's very important because this is Mocha that we're using that is often used for, for a unit tests and unit tests happen very fast usually. So actually, uh, instead of calling it here, I'll do it here. This timeout, so that's the timeout, the default timeout for um, the test suite that Mocha creates. So uh, we'll make it 50 seconds. The default is two seconds because that's how fast unit tests are supposed to be. Okay, and then let me call the global variable here for driver. And okay. So and here we tell it that to create a new instance and all these all these functions and their callbacks will have access to this variable that's that'll be defined as this before every new test. So this should work. Spins up the browser. <clears throat> All right. Second test. And now it's waiting for the opacity to change, but it doesn't. So, boom. I forgot to rename that one. All right. And now we get this, uh, this, this stack trace for the errors that we encountered in our test. But basically, this is the test here. So this is the test as it ran. Changes button opacity upon email being filled out. That took 6 seconds, 6.7 seconds. And then that passed. But this, this is the first failure. So it works at Mocha, but I should have called it something else. Um, and that was, that was this guy because we put in an invalid email. So this alert success never came up. And that's the error that you see here in a stack trace, like waiting for element to be located, the alert success, it never happened. And then um, the last one, which was the nav bar. So now let's just change this to make it work. And we'll give it a proper name. Submitting email. Um, shows 
on alert. And then this one was just shows a nav bar. All right. And now when we run it, this should just all look very clean. First test passed, second test is going to pass too, boom, and then uh, everything that we console log will appear in the, in the test as well, of course. So there you go, and that's what it looks like. We get three passing tests, three passing, it'll tell you how long it took, and, uh, and that's about it. The, this here, the numbers, they're red because, again, Mocha is often used for unit tests, and unit tests run very fast. So, if if our if our app ran faster, and if this test ran faster, like ideally, you know, under a second, then this would be green. If it was something like I don't know, two or three seconds, it would be yellow, and anything after that, uh, it would just be red because that's just way too long for a function to run, uh, as far as Mocha is concerned. But that doesn't matter to us. It's still good to know how long everything is taking. And um, that's it for Mocha. Uh, so that kind of showed you the basic usage of it. And that's the usage I'm going to be employing going forward in these videos. Um, we haven't, I haven't spoken about assertions yet, but I'll probably do that in the next video. And I'll talk about just writing these tests in a way that we can assert that certain things are true or false. And so that can give us really like a clear, so that we really tell Mocha what we want to happen. So that's it. See you in the next video.